project is going to be a little bit different. Oh, hi, by the way, I'm Sandy. Forgot to say that. But I'm going to show you part of the project that I've made. But I'm going to start off here by showing you a sketch of how I recommend that you approach it. And I took the workbook and dedicated a page to just making a sample sketch for you. So I made mine six by eight since that's the size of my page and sketched out some words. So whatever words you're going to put on there, make them nice and big because mine should have been probably bigger, bolder, something like that on my page. And then fill in the rest of the space around your words with different shapes. And you're going to have lots of little things you can fill in in between that if you do one of these ideas. Because the cool thing about patterns, like fabric patterns for sewing, is that there's all kinds of little words and little diagram and doodles and lines and measurements. All sorts of little stuff that you can fill in and make lots of little fun details in places like that. And you can also label each one of the little pattern shapes, the little clothing shapes, with different words. And the, the phrase that I'm using on mine is one from my pastor who has spoken about this particular topic several times, mentioned it a couple times, and I just have had it in my head to make something with patterns because of it, because his, his thing has the word pattern in it. But as always, I recommend that you hear from the Lord yourself instead of just copying what I do. So this is my attempt to try to get you to think outside the box a little bit instead of replicating my page where the Lord spoke to me through my pastor and think about where you might use a piece with a graphic like a pattern like this and you know the kinds of things that you can fit into it and put into all those little spaces and little things you can write. It could be a pattern of uh, I don't know healings in your family. It could be a pattern of events that led to some outcome. You know, all the steps for how you met your spouse and how your lives developed together or something. It could be any kind of a pattern that you see in your life that you might want to document. You could also do a word study in the scriptures about something and use this to see what the pattern is about how God talks about that topic. But the phrase that my pastor has said a couple times now is that Jesus is not just a payment for our sin, but a pattern for our lives. And that really hit me. It's just one of those things where I think sometimes we can think so much about how he paid for our sins that it he almost becomes a transactional savior, that we go to him because he saved us. That, that was his job. He did that. And that was, you know, that was great. That was awesome. We're, we're grateful for that. But the pattern for our lives part is the part that we sometimes skip. At least it's the part that I sometimes skip. Because it's, it's like too easy to forget that we're supposed to be modeling our behavior after him. We're supposed to be generous the way he was generous. We're supposed to be kind the way he is kind. We're supposed to be loving the way he's loving. We're supposed to be willing to do whatever people in front of us need. He would stop in the middle of everything and heal somebody just because they were there. He didn't gripe about something else being on their mind or they were busy or they didn't have time. He would just stop and do it. And I had a little event recently, I shouldn't say event, it was a, a thing that happened. I was in Costco and I was in line and had my package and I was, you know, trying to check out and this lady was talking to me and, you know, we had this little small talk conversation, which was fine. You know, that little small talk is not a bad thing. Got nothing else to do. So we're standing there. We end up in line also for the food because, well, long story, went to get a little piece of pizza there. And she was on the phone with her mom and her mom didn't want to tell her what she wanted her to get her for her lunch. Her mom had dementia and they were in a bit of an argument on the phone and she hung up finally in frustration. And I just, you know, wanted to say something encouraging. So I said, you know, you're, you're a good daughter. That's, that's really nice of you to try to bring lunch to your mom. And It was like this floodgate opened. It was the strangest thing. She just needed to unload and we're standing in line and she's telling me about her mom and how many places she had moved her from 
one home to another home to another home. And I was just like kind of sitting there absorbing this. And then she got into talking about how her distant sisters weren't helpful, or at least they weren't as helpful as she wished they could be. And she knew they couldn't be, but she just wished things could be different. She loved her mom, but she wished this were all easier. And yeah, okay, great. I'm happy to listen to you. This is great. But you know, I, I really just want to get my food and go. I was not feeling Jesus like this was not a good shining moment for me. But just as she stepped up to get her lunch, and she was going to take lunch to her mom, I just stepped up to the counter. And I said, this one's on me. And I told the guy to add my lunch to it and ring, ring it up. And she just sat there and looked at me for the longest time. She's like, yeah, what? And I just, you know, wanted to, to bless her in that way to do that. And lo and behold, she then says she wants to sit down and have lunch. She wants to know why I did this for her. Well, that turned into a long conversation. We had a long lunch together and it was really a good one. We both got to share about our experience with our moms, my mom who doesn't have dementia, but she's far away and my sister does all the care. So I got to share with her my experience being the distant sister and not feeling helpful. And she got to share with me her frustrations on her side. And it was like God made this little space for us to have a moment where we could listen to each other and hear almost our own family's other side of the story if you, you kind of picture what I mean. And I think there's a, a different understanding I have of what my sister goes through now. And by blessing this lady, it was like a little way of blessing my sister as well. So that was a, just a little moment that I wanted to develop a pattern in my life of taking time for people. And that's where this page is hopefully going to keep reminding me to do that. I want to try to find somebody to have a little extended conversation with once a week for the whole year. I'm going to see if that will work to get me a little more out of my shell and be a little more like Jesus. So that's my story, my crazy page, and I will see you guys again next week with a little more inspiration. Take care. Bye-bye.